<clears throat> Good morning guys, today's video is going to be a garden tour. That makes me cringe a little bit. There are some garden tours out there that are beautiful and dreamy and this is not going to be anything like that. If anything, this is just going to be for me to look back at and see where we started. You may notice that things look a little bit different around here. The short story is that we moved. At some point, I'd like to put all of that in a video and give you guys a tour of our place. But for now, I'm going to take you along with me as I walk through the garden this morning. It's not even really finished. We still have fencing and things to put up. The biggest issue for us right now is that we're dealing with a lot of like hard packed clay soil. And while that can be nutrient dense, it's also harder for the plants to get the nutrients just because everything is so dense and so hard packed and it has a hard time establishing a root system. You'll see that some things are not doing fantastic, some things are actually doing pretty well. Like I said, this might just only be a video for me to look back at and figure out where we started and look back and see how far we've come. In my mind, it's much more glorious than what it is now, but you have to start somewhere. I believe that everybody can do something and it really doesn't take much to produce quite a bit of food, even in a small garden plot. We just started with this. It is quite a bit bigger than our last garden. I figured it would be easier to grow into a space than it would be to have a space that's too small and constantly wish it was bigger. I wanted to, to give you a tour of my garden when it was all finished and beautiful, but that's just going to take forever. It's moving along slowly, so I just figured I would take you along and show you the progress that we've already made. You know, maybe this will encourage someone that you don't have to have a beautiful garden just to plant something or to grow some food. Things are gonna go wrong. You're gonna have big plans and, and things are gonna fail, but I'm not a great gardener. I'm just too stubborn to give up. So with that being said, come along. I'll show you what the garden looks like. I actually didn't even clean up the garden this morning because I just, I keep putting this off and I keep cringing thinking that, oh, someone's gonna, you know, think the garden is messy or, you know, it doesn't look pretty enough, but you know what? whatever. So this is the front gate. This is the main gate to walk in. It's just made out of pallets. So immediately when you walk in the gate, we have some stones for edging. This is an eight foot section right here. Cattle panels are four feet by 16 feet. So my plan is to put a T-post in the middle and have two cattle panels, one about right here and one about right here. I'm going to arch them over and it's going to be like a like a covered tunnel when you walk in and we're gonna have viney things growing up the side. So right here we have cucumbers planted and some marigolds. Same thing on this side. Hello kitty. Next to this cucumber you're gonna see this weed here. I'm actually keeping him here intentionally. This is called lamb's quarter, I believe. This is where the little lamb's quarter is. Most of the time what's growing in your soil can help you determine what's actually in your soil and what nutrients are available or lacking. Um, so lamb's quarter tells me that the soil is a little bit alkaline and that's actually part of the imbalance in the soil because most plants like a little bit acidic soil. We can read that and amend that you know, as we move forward. This little guy right here is rainbow chard. In this box right here, I actually have chives, and chives are actually a perennial, so that should come back next year. I now this is actually the beauty of gardening with kids. Um, sometimes you're really just gonna get random stuff and you will not be able to identify it. This little guy right here, to me, looks like a pepper. However, it was labeled as lavender, but we'll see what it grows into, if it grows at all. All throughout this bed is supposed to be peppers but there's just not a lot coming up. I know peppers take forever. We have a little marigold plant in the middle there. All right, and then next to that, we have some pepper plants that I actually bought at a greenhouse. They're okay. We put them in a couple weeks ago. They were pretty small when we got them, but I don't think they've grown a lot. Um, as you can see, some of the leaves are yellowing. I don't know if that means I need to add something. I'm really trying to stay away from chemical fertilizer, so I gotta figure out what I can put on it, maybe bone meal or blood meal. These are mostly just bell peppers. My plan for these was to just grow, chop them up and freeze them. Next to that we have a little parsley plant. He's not doing fantastically well, but he's not dead. This is supposed to be dill, but again we had some old seeds, so I'm not sure if anything actually came up, or if you can see here there's a little indentation right here. We may have had a chicken visitor. So to the right of that is another garden gate. Um, this is actually pretty wide. You'll notice that some of these paths are pretty wide. 
I think they are about six feet wide because at some point we're gonna have good soil and quite an abundance of a harvest and carrying that all by hand might be a little bit challenging. So my plan was to make these paths wide enough to have a little lawn tractor or a little garden tractor be able to come down here. To the right of that, we have this little tiny raised bed. This is my two-year-old's bed. My seven-year-old helped her plant it, so we have rainbow chard in the middle. They don't even know if they like chard, they just liked the colors. And we have some snapdragons and some bachelor button or blue button flowers. You can see he's actually quite tall. He was planted really early and ended up getting really stemmy and really leggy. My daughter likes to plant things without understanding the concept of how they're growing and I don't stop her. Next to that is my son's raised bed. He probably didn't fill it with as much compost as he should have, um, but I really try not to dictate what they do with their garden spaces. The garden can be great for producing food, but it can also be a good teacher in that um, you learn from your mistakes and there's few things as valuable as hands-on experience. So I give these spaces to my kids to let them do with it what they want and if they fail, Hopefully they learn something. In his garden though, I believe we have one, two, three, four pumpkin plants. We've got a marigold in the middle. What's actually really funny about this is that those the marigold plants, they come in quads, one, two, three, four. So he just took the whole thing and stuck it in the ground. He didn't split it up, but that's fine. And then I believe he has some tomatoes. I see a little tomato sign right there. Another one right there. We've got some thistles back there, but moving on down the path is my daughter's garden. She's put a little bit more time in, though she's been no more successful than my son has. I'm actually not even sure what she all has in here. She's got goldenrod, some straw. Oh, I actually do think she has something growing back here. I don't know what that is. So we'll see what comes of it. Again, I don't dictate what they do with these spaces. They are free to take care of them as they like. Here's a little bird bath that was left at the house. It's kind of bright. It's obviously empty. We need to get this filled. I want little things like this tucked in the garden to help the beneficial insects, encourage the birds to make a home here and be present in the garden to eat some of the bugs. Here is a whole pile of antlers that we found on our property. Those need to be moved at some point. And so that is the end of the west side of the garden. Um, as you can see, we have old posts on this side or old pieces of wood lining the garden. Um, this is kind of the center square here, and then there's like a garden border all the way around. That's where we came in. We just got through the south side and the west side of the garden. To the north here, we've actually got some sweet surprises that we found on our property. This is a little pear tree. There's not very many blossoms on this one, so there's not a lot of pears, but we had to trim them back quite a bit. There was a lot of golden rods surrounding this area, so I think they were competing for sunshine and light. Next to that is another pear tree, and this guy is actually doing really well. Um, so far we have not sprayed with anything, but we have quite a few little baby pears on this. So to the north of that is my husband's garden. He is the master of beans and potatoes. And over here, we tried some corn as well. So we'll see how that goes. You can see there's space around the garden. We'd eventually like to expand this and make this all into garden as well. Kitty, kitty. There's a cool story about this little guy. So we used to live on a busy road and one of the huge selling points of this place for us was that this road is so quiet. Um, it's like off of a main road, off of a main road, like off of a main road. It dead ends just to the east of us. And so one of the first weeks that we were here, we took all of our kids and we went for a bike ride and we found these little kittens along the side of the road. It must have been a stray cat or a barn cat or something that had a litter of kittens. The sister died. This little guy was in really, really bad shape. He was so skinny and so weak and so little. And so <laughs> naturally we took him home um, we fed him, we bathed him, and he has actually hung around and is so loving and so sweet to the kids. He is a barn cat, he stays outside, but he is a great mouser and he is definitely earning his keep. You can call him and he'll come running up to you and he'll lay in your lap. So for being a stray and feral cat, he, um, he's so sweet. The kids named him Pocket. He's a little purr box, he purrs all day long. Okay, back to the garden. 
So as we're walking around the garden, this is the east side of the garden. So there's a little plant here and here and here. These were all labeled when they were planted and then my toddler came along and pulled all the labels out. So I think these are some sort of muskmelon or cantaloupe or watermelon, but I guess we'll see what they grow into. Still moving along this east side, we have the tomatoes. So these three are Romas right here. And then these are just things to eat. We'll eventually have cattle panels along this side so we can use that as fencing and a trellis. I'm a big fan of multi-use. In the middle here we have two marigold plants on the sides and some basil. And I've been randomly burying, no thank you kitty. I've been randomly burying sunflower seeds because sunflowers draw toxins out of the soil. And so that guy actually came up, which I'm surprised, though his leaves don't look fantastic. But anyway, there's another little tomato, another one. And then we have one, two, and three more romas on this side. If you'll notice, there's like kind of tomatoes around the outside edge, basil here in the middle, and then another sort of loop, half loop. And I put some lettuce seeds in. There's little guys coming up. This guy actually has quite a few. There's some different kinds of lettuce in here too. So on the other side of the tomatoes is where we walked in and these are the cucumber plants here. Oh look, this little guy blossomed. So now let's talk about this middle square. These are just some plank boards that we found in the barn. I measured nothing when I did this garden. Then when I put these planks down, I started at the corner here. And then as you walk along them, you'll notice that it actually does not come out at the corner. So instead in this corner we just put a teepee. My intention is to put screws in the sides of these and do some string all the way around. I wanna grow like a teepee enclosure that's covered with vines and leaves for the kids. This is a little snap pea plant. So I've gotta get this strung up so he can grow. Going around the corner, this was supposed to be a snap pea plant. But someone stepped on it, probably the dog, and it died. So I just put this in here. I actually don't know what this is. I think it's another cantaloupe or something. That's the walkway that we just walked down. I'll talk about this side first. Here we have cherry tomatoes mixed in with um, some impatience and some weeds and some marigolds. Next we have a little raised planter box. This is mint. Um, mint is a bully, it's very invasive. So if you plant mint, it is a perennial. It will come back next year, but it spreads really easily. So give it a space of its own, kind of contain it and you won't have to fight it as much. Oh look, it looks like my daughter threw a seed in here too. You okay, can I help you? Next to that we have another rainbow swiss chard. This is purple cabbage. This is nothing, but I have a spaghetti squash plant here. So I'm assuming and hoping that at some point he'll just kind of take this over. This is supposed to be radishes. Is that radish? This is radish. So then yeah, that must be radish. I guess maybe they are growing. And then next to him tucked in the corner we have parsley. So I kind of already talked about this side of it. There's um, snap peas, some kind of melon, and a few sunflowers growing in a few random places. I'll start over here. So this is actually onions and they're doing really well. I am so surprised. We just got these as sets from a local greenhouse. We did not grow these from seed. And you can see they're doing really well. So I have no idea how this is going to turn out. If anything, we'll be able to eat tons of onions this winter. I hope that's not a foreshadowing of a sick winter, but at any rate, we will be just fine where viruses are concerned. There are areas in the garden, like right here, and right here where I just raked some of the big stuff back. All Naturally all the little particles fall to the bottom. Um, but I didn't want to completely waste the space so I put a little cherry tomato plant here at the end. And then right next to that is more cabbage. Behind that I kind of prepped this space but I haven't put anything in it yet. So we have a few snapdragons and things along there. And a few snapdragons and things along here. Obviously this guy is not doing very well. I think I might just sprinkle some radish seeds or some wildflower seeds in here and just kind of see what happens. Next to that we have cauliflower. I think there are nine here. Here's another little area that I prepped but haven't put anything in yet. Here's some more basil. 
And these are actually some green beans that we had at our last house. We harvested the seeds and we dried them and we weren't sure if they were gonna actually sprout, but lo and behold, they did. And then I could have swore this was a bean plant, but I'm telling you, this is not a bean plant. This looks more like some sort of like viney, wandering thing. So we'll see, maybe he'll end up taking over this space. So that's the second half of the center square. It's kind of random. I had someone come over the other day and I was showing her the garden and she's like, you know how men's brains are like boxes and women's brains are like noodles? And actually, <laughs> there's something to be said for his because his actually does really well. But he has the beautiful market rows. They're very straight, very intentional, easy to water. And I just wanted a really eclectic space where random things are tucked and kids can come in and find a snack anywhere and you're just never gonna know what you're gonna find. And so his is the garden that is perfectly organized like boxes and then mine is spaghetti. It's kind of fun, kind of quirky. It doesn't really make much sense, but I kind of like it that way. And we kind of come back around and make it to the entrance again. Hi. <laughs> So that's kind of it for this video guys. I've got kiddos that are getting up so I should go tend to them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if anything, this is just for me to have to look back on and see, look where we started. You know, I, I have hope in my heart that it will produce abundantly in the future. Um, but I believe that we have to start somewhere. So even if it's poor soil, even if it's less than ideal conditions, it's worth planting the seeds. It's worth gaining that experience from because even if even if I don't get a lot of food out of this garden, I'm still getting experience and I will have that knowledge for a lot longer than I would have the food. So thank you for watching. Thank you for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.